Hello. Welcome to All of Us Studios, you guys. And uh, tonight we have a podcast that we are going to talk about uh, social media from what are the biggest platforms, who are our biggest influencers, uh, what are kind of the biggest trends and topics going on in 2019, as well as share a little personal story that happened this last weekend where Will and I were kind of diving in and running our own kind of experiment uh, through Instagram. And we want to talk about the results from that and how everything kind of played out in turn. So thank you so much for being here with us. Once again, we're always trying to show you guys that we can have a conversation that's comfortable. We can talk about subjects like uh, social media, which has shown to honestly bring a lot of depression and anxiety to our newer generations and is and can be a very toxic place to put your time. <clears throat> There's a lot of negativity out there. There's a big wall called the internet that you can hide behind when you're on social media platforms and it allows people that typically wouldn't take their uh, take their voice and put it out there, wouldn't take that step in a crowd or in even a one-on-one -on -one situation, they wouldn't voice their opinion. But when 3,000 miles away, hidden behind the, uh, the facade of an IP address, they will speak their mind willingly as if they are the expert. And here we are not the experts and do not claim to be the experts on much. There's a few subjects where I think that Will and I are the experts, but um, this is definitely not one of them. It's a place that we're learning and it's a place that I think everybody's learning because it's kind of taking over the ad marketing space and it's really revolutionizing uh, our global economy. So as, uh, as, a new, as a new wave into the future, uh, I think it needs to be addressed and I think that it's a conversation that everybody needs to have amongst each other no matter what age it is because uh, it's something that's so important to the future of our society. So, Will, what do you think about this topic? Are you interested in this and uh, is this something that you feel is actually going to impact our future or is it just kind of like a, like a light switch, this thing's here and it's going to be gone in a minute? Am I interested? Yes. I mean, our entire platform is based off the internet. Let's be honest with each other. So we have to be interested in it. Whether we like it or not, we have to face it just like life challenges. We have to try to attempt to understand it. Like you said, we're not the experts, but you can attempt and you can chisel away as we always like to say and yep. kind of learning and putting those tools inside your belt, having an arsenal for yourself because all you want to do is gain knowledge. That's what this whole thing is about. And like you said, those people who don't feel like that they can be them best selves in person, but can hide behind that internet wall and spew hate or even positivity like mm -hmm. what we're doing. Is that your, is that your true self? Is that your best self? Is that you, who you want to represent in daily life when you interact with people? And I think the answer is probably no, generally across the board. So maybe, maybe we can, in our discussion here, maybe not change that for the world, but we can at least start that ball rolling down the hill to at least gain some momentum to be able to say, hey, this is what it is. It's not going anywhere. There's no restrictions basically on the internet other than caps and internet data stuff and whatever and whatnot. And we have to understand that this is something that we're growing with. And so we have to be better. We have to educate ourselves just like any other topic. Uh, and yeah, that, I'm really looking forward to diving into this topic. We actually have someone in our chat right now. Uh, doctor, hello doctor, we see you. Ooh, uh, we're actually the on Discord 4771. If you do chime in, let us know in the chat. I can see you right now. Let us know. 4771, we can put you on headphones. You can be part of the discussion. I think this is going to be exciting. Brian, back to you. Definitely. So um, I got a, uh, got a little question for you. So what do you think are the top three social media sites right now? What do you think? The top three? Top three. Instagram, Snapchat, and probably Twitter. You got none. Really? Isn't that wild? That is wild. Right? So, um, number one, Facebook. That seems very odd. Okay. Right? So, okay. Facebook, Facebook, I think, um, is extremely large because it was one of the first ones, right? It may not be 
the trending social media platform that it once was, but it is the platform that started with the youth, then expanded into aunts, uncles, parents, grandparents even, and I think that the older generation is using it now more than the younger generation. Like my mom and dad, they use Facebook. They don't use they don't use Instagram. They don't use Snapchat for sure, right? And they don't even know how to use Twitter. I think that the younger gen- the younger generation has moved more to a fast pace. Um, I want to see pictures. I want to go. I want to have stories popping up. Facebook is doing that now. They're they're catching back up. But they also they own Instagram, so they don't need to they don't need that quick that quick pace because they have they already own it right they have their two they have their two markets already tagged so number one facebook number two youtube okay youtube sitting at 1.9 billion facebook 2.23 billion youtube 1.9 billion number three think international what's what's that linkedin what's that so WhatsApp is, if for you, for those of you guys that are Americans, you probably may not even know what WhatsApp is, but WhatsApp is basically a service that you can download for free. You can uh, basically get a WhatsApp number and you can call and you can call and text people internationally for free that way without having to go through your, your normal, uh, your normal plans and stuff and having to pay up the wazoo. So that I thought was pretty interesting because I would have initially guessed just like you, I definitely would have thought that Instagram would be in the top three i know that it's super prevalent right. uh, uh, at least amongst our friends and the people that i know and um and let's let's use that to kind of segue into our instagram uh endeavor this weekend holding that thought okay it's go. really interesting though so, we'll dive into instagram here in a yeah. second but you mentioned facebook you mentioned youtube as the top two mm-hmm. guess who owns those google so with that being said and you were talking about the transition of how your parents are all on Facebook. Yep. Our family members are on Facebook. Mm-hmm. We had the unique opportunity in history. Maybe you don't remember this, but I think you do because you started talking about it. We were the first real actual true dot edu generation that you needed to have an email address that was yeah. a collegiate email address. That's true. For Facebook. Do you remember when Good it was call, just baby. Dot edu? I do. It was huge because I mean, you went to Oregon State. I went to Linfield. So yep. I'm ironically wearing the shirt today. <laughs> perfect, perfect timing. Perfect. Um, and that's how you were able to connect, even if it wasn't like a school that was an hour yeah. away. It was a school that was in Bozeman or, uh-huh. you know, up in Puyallup or wherever it may exactly. be. Oh, hey, you have a Facebook. Oh, hey, you meet at a party. You meet at a social gathering. Uh-huh. It didn't matter what it was, a football game, a basketball uh-huh. game. Oh, you have Facebook? It was this it was, new thing. It was a where cool thing, It was a sure. social interaction among college students. Yes, it was. And then, I'm not sure what the time was when Google actually purchased it. When that happened, Zuckerberg goes, okay, there's more money to be made. Boom, the email let's floodgates ex- open up. Let's open Whoa. up to Google. Let's open up to Yahoo emails. Let's open it up to all this sort of stuff. So I think that's an interesting take. I just wanted to leave that two cents in there before we go to Instagram. And the, and the, the scary thing about that is the monopolization of personal data yes. that Google now has. Oh, it's ridiculous. So so originally, right, you think of you think of typical typical commodities in our world, right? We had you go back to 16, 1700 and people are growing potatoes or agriculture, they're growing corn and they have they have a livestock and they have wood and it's like you're playing settlers of Catan, yeah, it's right? Natural resources up the exactly. wazoo. And so that is that is the prevailing thought that a commodity is something that is either made or harvested that is a good for another person, right? Right. And then came Google's idea of we're going to harvest everyone's personal information and sell that out to big companies so that they can target exactly their demographic to buy their product. And once that once personal data became a commodity in our society, For I think everything changed because now Google wants Facebook, now Google wants Instagram, now Google wants YouTube, right? Where typically they're they they're they're a search engine, they're a place where you go so that you can find other things, not a place that is absorbing all of the data, running it through algorithms and tailoring it for specific businesses that are paying them large amounts of money for that data. Or even just for and, personal feed. Exactly. So that commodity I think is has significant impacts on how our social media experience is because now there's a motive. Now there's a money sign 
behind who we are and what we're posting and how many platforms we are on. Right. Just like we were talking about during our live stream today, um, Yule was saying that, oh my God, you guys are on so many platforms. You're on, you're all of us studios on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. You have a Discord channel. You have a website. You have a Twitch account. Like we're, yes, but that's because <laughs> There's so many different demographics and so many different people that affect or that are connected through so many different avenues that we have to spread our net wide to connect to the largest audience. Otherwise, we could be missing a wonderful group of people out there that never would have seen it because they're they're more narrow focus on to like a single individual typically is narrow focus on to one platform or another, which they and they call that home, just like our parents use Facebook as their home, they don't need 15 platforms to send the same message to my grandma from, I'm going to send you that message on Facebook, then I'm going to post a story about it on Instagram, and then I'm going to send you, you know, like there's no need for that when they're, when you're doing small group things and direct messaging, there's no need for it. So what we're doing is still, I think, uh, cutting edge and new being on so many different platforms and, and being able to bring so many different groups together. Uh, under one name, which is our name, All of Us Studios, and that's the community that I know that uh, we've talked about for at length that we're trying to grow here, which is one that does encompass all. Hashtag the All of Us. You have to go where your customers are. It's it's marketing. It's business 101. The people who want to stay in their social circle and do the thing and try to accelerate their one platform, whether it's YouTube or just Twitch or or just Facebook or whatever it may be, you have to go to where your audience is. And this is what we ran into this weekend with Instagram. So this is a great transition Absolutely. for you to be able to kind of take the reins here. Honey. Oh my goodness. So this weekend we we're out as uh, most of you that follow us um, and our and our live stream know. We were out last weekend. We went to the beach took a little guys trip the four of us some of our best friends and uh, and my cousin trevor and trevor actually um as a guy who i don't think is super deep in the tech field had this idea so we were talking about you know growing our channel and growing and um figuring out a way so that we could outreach to more people and he says well why don't you just follow why don't you just find someone who fits your demographic right follow them and then it auto um gives you a suggestion list of people to follow and why don't you just follow just tons of people just like we were talking about throw that net just just follow you know 200 300 new people and see where that lands you and then your stuff is in front of them maybe they like it back maybe they follow you maybe they don't maybe you pick up 10 percent of those people see what happens run this experiment so, so we surged so we do so we do we surged we, uh, we added about 300 new followers. We did find a, a person. They are a Twitch streamer, kind of a cosplayer, um, and, and seemed like a genuine, like really good kind of, kind of person that fits our brand very positive and had some really cool like fitness stuff, which I know, and if you guys know that you follow us, um, we are always trying to blend health and positivity and fitness in with our gaming and entertainment um, information. So, um, so we did that. It took us down <laughs> the craziest rabbit hole. Holy cow. Yeah, so we started out with this one individual person followed, and we started following the people, and the algorithm took us um, deeper into the cosplay section, which then led us deeper into the anime section, which then led us into this subset of culture that I didn't even know existed. And man, I'm not going to lie, uh, we try to be open and uh, and and non-judgmental to all peoples. Uh, this is something that is uh, hard for me to wrap my head around. Um, I don't know. So what we ran into is uh, agahio face. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's a Japanese word. Ahagio? I don't know. What do you think, Will? Ageo? Ageo face? Ageo. Ageo. It's yeah. A H E. G A O. If you want to look it up, you can hashtag that in Instagram. You're going to run into the same thing that we ran into. We didn't even know this existed. So apparently, this is like the face that um, Japanese anime uh, like creators and producers put on their characters when they're having this sexual experience, when they're having like an orgasmic experience. Instead of showing the full um, the full thing, they just do this face where they kind of like stick their tongue out, cross their eyes, roll them back, and it's like an expression of the action without showing the action basically and what we ran into was this subset of of people uh, you know most of them were um 
well, I wouldn't say most. A lot of a lot of them were Japanese, but a lot of them also were from all other um, all of all of all of the nationalities. But these people had 30, 20, 20, 30 million million followers, and their page is simply them making this face, and that just blew my mind. I'm like, we are trying to do something so wide scoping and and what you know what we believe is is a really positive thing and then there's this tiny niche tiny niche that is just simply a person making a face every one of their posts of the person making their face 30 million followers so what is it what is it is it simply the you know the old time sex sells uh theology or is there something new here i don't know i don't know what it is and uh and is there something to be learned from this? What do you think, Well, What do we learn from this? I think historically speaking, I think sex and video games have been tied together ever since the birth of video games. You look at you look at your characters, you know, who are sexually, you know, objective, like, you know, your Laura Crofts back in the early oh, 90s. Oh, boy. The big boobs and all this the sort boobs. of stuff. And just everything. It's the big so, boobs. So you see the evolution of that play into the culture and we always talk about how video games are still in their infancy so we see our community not maybe not our community but the gaming community mm -hmm. as a whole explore these different avenues and kind of like test the limits really like see what kind of you can get away with i think there was sense. like this volleyball game that came out that i think kind of tested the limits i think it's called dead or alive yeah, <laughs> yeah. so with that being said i mean there there is historical milestones that you can see where sex is directly tied to gaming so i think this is just literally a complete offshoot and a complete just different avenue of what this can be exploited as is it good Probably not. Is it bad? I don't know. I'm not the one to judge that. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that it's here. It's been it's been out there in the wild. We just came across we, this yeah, place, and I'm sure it's no been idea. in the works for years now. Um, and so I think we just I think we have to approach it just like anything else in life, and understand that this is something that we don't fully grasp. It has a sexual connotation, obviously, to it. The thing that gets me is that are the people who are making this face, are the people uh -huh. who are putting themselves out there to portray this as their brand, is this ultimately what they want? And if it is, am I, I'm not them to stop that. I'm not yeah. the person to stop that. Absolutely. But is that the message that they're attempting to portray? Or is it the complete opposite where they're doing it because they have 30 million followers and they keep it up because that's just their quote unquote job? I don't know. I find that really interesting. Hmm. What do you think? So, okay, so if we go if we're going into quote unquote job then this is a clearly a market. So is there do you do you think that there is a company that then hires these young girls with a particular face, makes these accounts and just takes shots of them? uploads them on a regular basis of some type of schedule that they know is going to affect whether it's the 24 hours once a week whatever it may be so that they can get the highest impact and therefore they can make money and then give a cut to these girls who make the face do you, yeah i mean do I you think, think there's a business it's I not an it's, individual thing it's a business yes and i think it's even I, I think it's even you know maybe a little bit simpler than that where they do reach out to these let's say models so to speak mm -hmm. And they say, hey, we've seen your page. We like what you're doing. X, Y, and Z, promote this product. We'll give you this cut, whatever and whatnot. And I think it's much easier for the content creator or the model yeah. than, than the initial like, hey, back and forth, this and that. I think the brand ambassadors reach out to the content creator uh -huh. and say, hey, this is, gotcha. we see you doing this X, Y, and Z. And it's, it's basically a backseat for the content creator at that point. Really? I, I think that's how it goes. Yeah. I would imagine so yeah. as well. I would imagine so as well. So, so next week we're gonna have uh, our own business based on this. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> it's, uh, not not we're our starting a whole new thing. I know, not our particular style. But um, in wrapping of this c scenario, um, it was really interesting. So our, like I said, my cousin was the one that started this whole thing. And in wrapping, I I asked him. He he then said, okay, so. So this is okay, you know, everything's fine with this. You guys are all of us studios, your brand is about encompassing everybody, and, um, and, and so you have, to, you have to let this 
be a part of your world as well. And because when I initially saw it, I was like, "Ooh, we need to. We did our surge. It's time to purge, right? We're gonna get rid of a little bit of of the stuff that doesn't really fit our brand." And Will and I were kind of unsure about keeping it or not keeping it, kind of w within our brand. And so I posed the question to my cousin. I say, um, "So you have two daughters, and if these, if if you." I mean, his daughters are young now, but if they were a little bit older and he ran into and, or found, stumbled upon their their accounts that were of this manner. So they're you know, they're making this face, his daughter's making this face. Would that be acceptable to you? Would that be an okay thing? Would you allow it and would you accept that into your community? And he said, absolutely not. So that, that then... Um, that then kind of tilted me back and forth, you know, like we're supposed to accept them and be this like global entity that um, that allows all peoples, and yet it is something that is also taboo because most of them were young girls making these faces, and it's it's, it's kind of strange to see um, to see sexualized uh, youth like that, and and it was uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable. Anyways, so. Do these people care about their audience? In short, I think that they do. They do. I think it's a different type of care and concern that you and I project out uh -huh. there. I mean, I kn I don't want to speak for certainty, but I would say that I know that it's a different type of energy that they put out mm -hmm. there. But I think that if you're asking in terms of black and white, do they care about their audience? I absolutely think so. Okay. Um, what do you think, where, or where does caring about your audience rank nowadays on of things that are most important to a social media platform in brand marketing so we're starting we have created our all of us studios brand we have tara glowing right here um and so we have this brand is our audience the most important thing is the revenue created the most important thing is there something else that i haven't even thought of that you can think of what do you think is the most important thing about social media nowadays as brand marketers like we are what do you think going with the ebbs and flows and being able to change on a dime i think that especially with this business you even talk to different brand marketers i got, had the opportunity to take a online class called what is social from northwestern university uh -huh. and the number one thing that randy who was my professor was mm -hmm. saying and kept stressing was that even he feels like he's out of the know and this is the professor teaching everything and so it constantly evolves and constantly changes so i think that the number one important thing is your audience because your audience is always changing. It's always fluctuating in some small capacity. You may get the new Joe Schmo follower who is from the middle of the country who just got above 10 megabytes per second on his internet connection to tune into something that he <laughs> finally never, got that there. He, exactly, that he <laughs> never knew was there yep. before. That person, that content creator, has to cater to that. Otherwise, well, from a business standpoint, they're leaving money on the table. Yeah. Why wouldn't they go pursue that person? Absolutely. I think that's the same mentality that all content creators should have, whether you're sexualizing your content, whether mm -hmm. you are trying to literally encompass the world and bring positivity to gaming and health and fitness and what we're trying to do, or just, you know, join up and trying to, you know, make sure everything is lucrative and everyone is positive. And that's hard, man. It like, is hard. That's super, super hard. I so I think totally that agree. in short, they absolutely need to create about or care about their audience. And that's their number one thing. But at the same time, we always talk about it. If you're not having fun, what the hell are you doing? Exactly. So if you're exactly, so if we're taking that and running with that, I mean, these people, are they having fun or is this simply a business to make money off of these other people? I think that it's a totally different, a totally mm. different thing. Mm. You know. Mm. Let me ask you. Okay, he's got something. You're for me. You're, you're a good looking guy. You're a personal trainer. Are we gonna you, Are we gonna sell sex right now? Well, that that's kind of my question to you right now. Is hello? Would you be comfortable? I don't have pecs. <laughs> show, 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 show the audience. Uh uh. See, you, you have pecs. You're fine. I have little pecs, but like, they're not enough to sell. I don't think. <laughs> If you took the road of serious content creator of personal training, of fitness, of health, of the okay, let's let's say you know the, the not necessarily selling your body, but using your body as a tool. Uh huh. Okay. Would you feel good about that? <sighs> because you're an expert. 
You're right. I am an expert on health and fitness. I'm a nutritionist. I am I am nationally certified. I've been through many courses. I've flown around the country to uh, many conferences. I definitely um, consider myself a professional and an expert on that topic. I don't feel I feel maybe because of the fact that I'm that I am further along in my career in that field. I feel like I can speak my way into you know, speak my way and show my way I suppose with the the nomenclature that I have into um, into a lucrative career and I don't need to sell my body to to show even though it maybe maybe it would help maybe it would help maybe maybe ha- pulling pulling the abs out and doing some crunches would get me more followers um, but I don't think I necessarily need that at this point but maybe I do because we've never tried that I don't know I definitely know that when I first started in this career and there was uh, p90x coming out and there was uh, who is the guy that does the oh God we had so many different so many different little programs coming out and I wanted to get into that, and we shot it. We shot a couple videos. Um, we never put them up. Maybe we will one day. Maybe you guys will see that. We have this awesome one at the park where this guy just wanted to be a part of our video, and he's just standing in the back. Like, <laughs> I wasn't sure what remember you're that? About, oh my yeah. god! We're like, dude, get out of here! That's We're like funny. shooting a video. It was it was pretty funny. But um, oh, Brinks, what are you doing, girl? Right. So, but I don't I don't I don't think I need to do that nowadays. I, su- I suppose because I. Or maybe I, maybe I simply am. Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm just uncomfortable selling my body for money in that way because that's really what it is. I mean, if you're out there half naked on the internet, there's a reaction point to it. And I and I have posted some things over the years on my Instagram account without a shirt on, but I don't. Not with the not with the uh, the point to make money off of it. You know, I'm not a verified Instagram personal account person. Right. I'm not a Kim Kardashian out there or something. Not yet. Not yet. This is true. This Actually, is true. To, bounce, to bounce to our chat here real quick, we have uh, Cele- Celestial... Sorry, it's a far away text reading. Celestial Crafts Cause. Uh, to touch on the subject, I feel personally that it's a trap. So in our society, sex does sell. So business will market towards that society actually will pay attention to. This is definitely something that happens to the cosplay community. Yes, I totally agree. I totally, totally gotcha. agree. Gotcha. Uh, see, and that's exactly where we went. We went from we're going to from Twitch streamer, gal, fitness, cosplay thing, and then the Instagram algorithm pulled us straight to sex. Right. It literally took us to cosplay, to anime, to this face, to the Ag- Ahageo face. I don't know how to we'll pronounce it. it. One day we'll get it. Um, but it did. It drove us directly to sex. And so if the if the social media algorithms are designed to drive you to sex, then that is going to be the most profitable place profitable place to be because at the end of the rainbow, you're the, you're the golden ticket. You know, you're Willy Wonka right there, just waiting with your big old boobs and your six pack abs and your whatever it is, you know, for right. for people to follow. So, right. um, exactly. I don't know, man. It's a tough, it's a tough, a tough world out there. But we're doing the best we can, right? Not to get totally off uh-huh. to, uh, to linger on it, but like we're going to be going to PAX here pretty soon. Coming yeah. Up, uh, late August, God, so September. excited. It's PAX be West is insanely off the chain. If you guys have never been, I encourage you go. Um, basically, it's about sixty thousand of us. Video gamers, uh, card games, uh, board games, you name it. Everything that is game-based is there up in Seattle. And I've got the opportunity to cosplay up there. And you bet, I went up as Naked Snake. I had the straps on, chest shirtless, hair back in the ponytail when I still had long hair, and just the, just the camo pants. And I walked around with my shirt off all day long. Now, did I do it for a reason? You bet I did. God, you're, you're brave. You absolutely bet I did. The husband of this now, man. Now, my question to you is that when we do go and cosplay, because we have to do it this year, we absolutely have to. I'm not wearing a man thong. Not a man thong. Okay. What character would you feel that your threshold is to be able to show your best money-making self? And I'm just going to say that right there as far as what you got, baby. Your best money-making self to show yourself off, to also represent all of us and to also feel good about yourself and what you've done in your career. Loaded question. Um, what character, where would you feel comfortable? Now that you I have th- a little bit of basis I feel, for me. I feel like the, the, first, the first place that my mind goes 
is to like a like a seriously like shredded like maybe at the end of end of his cell battle before Gohan takes over that Goku that's just ripped apart in his and and like his his um, like kung fu martial uh, orange I don't know what they call that suit that he always wears his uniform whatever uh, something like that I th- I feel like I could do with the hair <laughs> blow yeah. it up and and just because then he, it's exposure but it's like. It's you're exposed because of like this intense battle that you just went through and you got ripped apart by, you know, whatever freezes beams and all that stuff. So I feel like that more so is something that I could do rather than a character who is just their initial face value, uh, their initial face value costume is just nudity. I feel like you know, like there's a reason that the nudity occurred. I would feel more comfortable there than just strictly. Uh, nudity. Gotcha. What kind of male characters are there that are very exposed? Well, the first... I mean, there's a million women, right? But so, right. The... what? What's a man? Give the... me one. The first one that I think of that okay. I would need to get incredibly shredded for and come up with a ball <laughs> and I come up with a ball cap for here pretty soon is Kratos. Oh yeah, so... he's nude like. Exactly. Always. Exactly. Right? So, I mean, that's my first choice God. this year. You would have, have to lift you, you, some you, you, weights. You, 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 you gotta get me shredded. You gotta be you gotta big. Get me Are you gonna be shredded? Are you that'd do, be fun. Are you I doing think that? That'd be sick. I'll I be your be... son. Oh. <laughs> I'll walk Actually, her. That'd be a funny dynamic. Right? That would be a really funny dynamic. <laughs> could I? Would I have to? Would would, you, would we have to get you on stilts or something? The, see, I could be the son, and you could be Kratos. Why am I Kratos? Because your hair is already close from being shorter. <laughs> ah. I mean, you could shave anything. Gosh. What do we got over here? Well, can you give us a read? Oh, yes. Oh, we got, okay. Man, the is this Celestial answer... back in again? Yeah. Nice. Oh, Karina from Gary. I, wow, those are a bunch of words. Get I close. Yeah, Get close. On. He's on okay. it. I think. <clears throat> Man, the correct answer is Kamina from Gurren Lagan. If you've ever seen Gurren Lagan, please do watch Kill a Kill. There's naked men in it. You're shown on a pedestal. Tell me, well, tell, give it, I got my computer right here. Yeah, give me a, how do we do it? Uh, G? K-I-L-L space la kill. K-I-L-L. Kill a kill. We're on it. Thank you, Celestial Crafts. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Whoa, are those men? That's not a man. Is that not a man? Is that a man? Man man with boobs. Man with boobs? Boob man. Boob man. Boob guy. See, we're learning stuff. He's got, maybe he's, uh, maybe he's on estrogen pills or something. Those are, are those dudes? Those are round pecs. Those maybe, are round pecs. Maybe they're very, <laughs> yeah. Maybe they're very round pecs. Um, this looks cool though. I like it. I like it. All right, let's. We, that was a tangent, a wonderful tangent. Yeah. But we're, let's get back to our social media uh, topic for the night. Yes. So, um, how how pre-produced and edited and formulated and designed um, does the content that you pr- produce need to be, or should it be? Kind of this this new wave of quick access, vertical shooting, phone shooting on your story, whatever it is, um, authentic, off the cuff product. What do you think? What do you think? The history of social media. Where did it start? Where has it gone? Where is it going? What's the best place to be? What do you think? I think that when filmmakers and actual content creators went from this Mm -hmm. to turning it to this just resulted in a matter of not wanting to change why turn your phone 90 degrees to get a wide angle shot when that's all cinema and this sort of stuff it doesn't matter anymore i think that the i think that the production level can be significantly compromised because of the ease and convenience that this thing provides for you and it's that simple i think that going back to five years ago or seven years ago when you had the pre-produced shots of you know turning your phone sideways and actually capturing it in widescreen and all that sort of stuff versus flipping your phone 90 degrees and be like i'm gonna post this to my story and i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna do this and i've done all of this in a matter of 45 seconds yeah so i think the ease and convenience has outweighed a really? lot of the creativity but i think the creativity is equally as important and i think there's a lot of content creators out there 
who either miss the mark on one end of the spectrum or miss the mark on the other end of the spectrum. And I know for us, we try to find that balance of like, Definitely. let's take a quick pop shot. It's uh -huh. not anything that's created or, or edited or whatever, whatnot. It's just our mood. And then we have other stuff that's really pre-produced uh -huh. and stuff like that. You know, we'll sit there and we'll, you'll put together a headphone and a controller and put it in front of a green screen and have this nice ambient shot to represent PlayStation. Yes. Yeah. Because what we do as yeah. far as our lives. Absolutely. So I think it's a balance, like anything. Okay, so do you think that um, there's an opening then in the market? If 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 we started out with this widescreen kind of film-based, cinema-based shot right. that was heavily produced because we're coming from the film era right. um, into the let's call it the story era sure. i guess you know the like the, era. exactly yeah. this the the quick shot this is what i'm doing let me let me go boom boom the tiktok era That's like we moved beyond that. the vine era into the tiktok era right yeah. so in the tiktok era but now just like anything vintage and retro always comes back around right they exist for a reason is the heavily produced content a market that is now open and more exposed because of the the move to vertical shooting i or like to think so my old 31 year old ass <laughs> sitting here would like to hope so because my background is basically in theater and film for yeah. the most part so i would like to think that do you that's think there's the going to be a big bounce I hope so because that's what I'm rooted in, mm -hmm. and so my me going against the grain is turning my phone 90 degrees in that profile <laughs> shot because I'm yeah. not used to that. That's totally. not that's not my that's not my mo. Yeah. But understanding that that is such an ease and convenience now, mm -hmm. I have to adapt to that. Otherwise, I'm going to sink just like anything else. Totally. We got to so, move. We got to move. We got to move. So, do you think that it's do you think that growth happens more so as an individual? that can produce their personal their cuz there's so many more emotions i think that come out from a from a person right from if i were to have my own personal profile and i can i can show my emotions a lot more than a business shows their emotions right so how imp and once you start collaborating with other people now you're getting multiple moods multiple emotions so what is the best way do you think to grow on social media these days is it to be that single individual with a very defined personal emotion is it to be a individual and collaborate your emotion with multiple other people's moods to create a product or is it to strictly be this almost emotionless business that is absorbing what their demographic is telling them and producing a product that is going to reflect their demographics emotion not their business's emotion what do you think is the best way to grow on social media i think you have to be a little bit of an actor no matter what i think that you know you're you're let's let's call out the big live streamers right now you know ninja Oh, Doctor Disrespect, and I'll even take it a step further. We should with dye who our hair, who <laughs> right? Who, who don't live stream, but they do. But their presence is much more on YouTube, like the Angry Joe Show, for example. Joe has a sidekick. He's got he's got Joe there. They have millions of followers, pre-produced content, and they yell at the camera the entire they just time. Yell. I mean, it's literally called straight. the Angry Joe Show. And so, yes, they have fun. They have emotion. They they sounds try, like Alex Jones. It's comedy. It's supposed to be comedy. So it's not it serious. Is. Right, correct. It's, not, it's very much satire. It's not Alex Jones. No, it's very much satire. Okay. Um, so with that being said, I think that you have to heighten things up, mm -hmm. but you still have to stay true to yourself. And I think that's the best thing that we bring to the table is that you bring an energy and I bring an energy to this. Totally. That we maybe necessarily don't have in our real lives, but... I don't know. I'm pretty pumped up, dude. But that, <laughs> but that, that only benefits you. Right? I, all, I, all, that yeah. only benefits your brand. That only benefits who yeah. you are as a person. So I think in that acting sense, that's exactly what people need to be doing is they need to portray and put themselves a little bit further out there to be able to get that audience and then understand that they have to work at getting that audience. Absolutely. Dude, I'm learning from you every day. You're, you're, you're my acting coach. I mean, look at this. Bang. These are not prescription. But you they thought they were. But they look good, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you need some glasses. All right, I know. They're, they're blue blockers, actually. There is a purpose for them. We have screens. We look at them. They block oh, out the screens. Da, 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 da. Well, <gasps> who are the top 10 biggest influencers in the world right now? Most followers. 
What do you think? What do you think? Ninja. Um. It's gonna blow you away. Ninja's not even on the list, son. Not even in the top twenty. All right. Ninja's not even in the top. I don't even know. I'm gonna start naming Instagram models at this point. (laughs) Jessica Negri. I have no idea. Uh, We'll just (laughs) lay it on me here. Number one, Cristiano Ronaldo. Number two, Selena Gomez, Kylie Jenner, Beyonce, Leo, Leo Messi, Ariana Grande, Kim Kardashian, Neymar. What? See, soccer players, international players, huge international players. Three of the top ten huge international soccer players. Kendall Jenner, all the Jenners, all three the of them, top ten. The Rock, Justin Bieber. Then Instagram itself. Just Instagram. <laughs> Straight up Instagram. All right. Shawn Mendes, who's that? He's a guitar player? Yeah, well, he's a, he's a vocalist. For who? For himself. Is He He must be incredible. He's an artist. How have I never heard of him yeah. if he's the number 13 on the list? I don't know. He's an artist. Then our girl, pink badass, Nicki Minaj. Oh, she's on oh. her? Oh, gotta give Nicki God, some love. Nicki is my girl. I love Nicki. Uh. We're gonna put up some dance videos of Nicki and then get copyrighted. For I'm gonna it. just dance to Nicki tonight. <laughs> then someone named Bad Galari. Don't know who that is. Mm. Zendaya, Billie Eilish is taking over the 17 spot. I'm not surprised. Chloe Jenner, Emma Watson. Emma hey, uh, Watson. Number 19. She's a social activist. That's why she's on there. Yeah. Taylor Swift takes 20. Mm. So that's our top 20. All of us studios, number 21. Riveting. No, not yet. <laughs> uh, amazing. We're not there yet, but one day we will. Anyways, to wrap up our social media platform discussion, I think that we learned a lot of stuff tonight. I think that we uh, we we have some direction here, and we hope that you guys found something informative and something good. Uh, we're able to pull something away from what we were talking about today, whether from our personal story, whether from some of the statistics that we were able to uh, dig up online, or just from us kind of throwing it back and forth and having a, having a good time with this thing. We like to take on some of these tough subjects and show that we can have a comfortable conversation about them, and we hope that you can take this and you can go have this kind of in the back of your mind so when you're running with your friends you don't have you don't have a you know a dead silent time you can jump in and <laughs> and open up with some fun conversation like this one so thank you so much for being here we really appreciate it and uh we'll catch you guys next time at the all of us studios and one time one time for the people in the cheap seats uh, bye guys i get hell <laughs> Oh. Uh...